News First News Line with Faraz Shaukatali. And a joy good morning to you. This is News Line. Live as always from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Clamble. And uh, this morning, rather wet out there in Clamble, uh, but it's a holiday and um, the traffic isn't too bad. But nevertheless, consternation galore. And uh, to discuss a couple of matters uh, with a legal aspect is that wonderful legal personality, eminent and never been uh, mindful of becoming a PC. He's here in all his glory, Mr. Gomin Dasri. Very good morning to you. Good morning. I'm in my usual self, not in glory. You are always in glory, Mr. Dasri. Thank you. And I want to ask you, Mr. Dasri, how essential is it that we stick to the rule book when it comes to national procurement? It is very important that we keep to the rule book because we see it now a bond scam on which has many, many implications and aspects that are far, far removed from the rule book. Mm. But the rule book, of course, can be is flexible in the sense the rule book can be interpreted in such a way that you can at times maybe flirt around with a rule book provided you are within the framework of the rule itself. Right. Now, Mr. Asher, do you remember over the past two years, two, two years and a bit, two years, eight, six months, whatever, since uh, February, the end of February, so really the consternation started in the beginning of March 2015. Time and time again, in various fora, the Prime Minister has maintained, or maintained at the time, that there was no wrongdoing. He couldn't, he couldn't suspend the governor at the time, the central bank, Mahendra, he couldn't remove him, he couldn't do anything because there was no wrongdoing and been proven. All right. Now then, since then and up to now, various bits of evidence has come out and now, especially at the Presidential Commission. And you know, there have been, the evidence has been led to say that phone records have been selectively deleted passwords have been almost conveniently forgotten only for the CID to break in or do whatever it is they did and get all the details there are references there are SMS's that have been sent talking about the PM and asking for minutes of meetings because the bond auction was the next day and so on and all this has come out because of the Presidential Commission of Inquiry. That is it, this is this a good thing? Well, let's take different aspects that you raised. Mm. A, I would say, is the conduct of the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister at the beginning was very swashbuckling and with much bravado said this was nothing of a matter that should get warrant this kind of exposure. If you remember, he appointed three men committee, gave them a mandate so confined that they had to come to a ruling that was nothing dangerous was said, nothing harmful was said of the bond. Thereafter, it got snowballed, especially you, Financial Times, uh, Sirasa, they've spotlighted it very much. And now what has happened is the Prime Minister has gone totally mum. He didn't say a word. Uh, but he still runs the office. But he, his friend Mahendran, are not as verbally as strong as they said that the bond stood ground. So I think there's a definite variation, definite change by President Sirisena doing the most sensible thing I think he has done in his life, appointing a commission of independence, but more so, appointing commissioners who are prepared to do their work properly. Yes, those commissioners are uh, the Honourable um, Chitra Siri, the Honourable uh, Prasanna Jayawardner and Mr. Kandasamy Vedupille, the retired Deputy Auditor General. Yes, Mr. B but you know they must be careful. They mm. must, they have a jurisdiction that is going to be challenged at some stage. They should follow the principles of natural justice. They should be totally unbiased and, uh, and uh, impartial mm. and more so they should stick to the mandate because if that is so, no one can touch them and so far their performance in my mind is excellent. Um, 
I'm going to refer you to the to the uh, the the Gazette notice uh, in the appointment of the uh, uh, of the three commissioners, uh, and it's of course uh, dated uh, the 27th of January, 2017, and uh, this is the proclamation by President Maithripala Sirisena. He starts with, well, he says greetings, but after that he says, whereas irregularities committed in respect of the matter referred to in the schedule here too have been brought to my notice. I just want to ask you, isn't that itself um, a sort of, um, uh, a sort of, is it a prima facie sort of case? Well, it appears to be from his pronouncement that yeah. there are certain irregularities, but he doesn't say that those are established irregularities, yeah. irregularities that have been brought to his notice. Correct. So, I mean, when a first matter is brought to his notice, you can't go and put it under the sheet and forget it, like the, when, when our ambassador in London got assaulted by uh, one yeah. of the MPs or the uh, acting cabinet ministers. Yeah. But you, those things have to be inquired. So when matters are brought to his notice, he appoints a very able, competent judicial body but to inquire. You know, it, this, this gazette notification is so wonderful for its clarity. It says here, uh, I, Maitri Pala Sirisena, President of the Republic, repose in great trust and confidence in your prudence, ability and fidelity Do." in pursuance of the provisions of Section 2 of the Commissions of Inquiry Act, as amended, appoint you and the names of the three to be my commissioners to investigate, inquire and report into the following. And then, this is the point I want to ask you, Mr. Kodasri, to whether proper procedures and adequate safeguards have been adopted to ensure that the matter referred to, that is the issuance of bonds in the in this schedule, resulted in obtaining the optimum price or benefit for the government. Clarity at its best? I would put it this way. I mean, that is, the, that is what is called the mandate. That is the jurisdiction of the Commission lies in that area, not outside it or inside it. They must stick firmly within that, those boundaries. But as far as his qualifications or his recommendations or his certification of the goodness or the greatness of the Commission is not is to be taken seriously by anybody because the public perception must be at the end of the inquiry they must, if they form that opinion it's a great credit to our judiciary which has had fallen times mm. I think we could be very proud if the commissioners live up to the reputation that they have been entrusted or empowered by the president but the president's opinion means nothing to me mm. because politicians of all descriptions are very flowery in their language but my feeling is that I've watched the proceedings closely over the months and they have really fulfilled that obligation. But they must stick strictly to the rules of principles of natural fairness, equal treatment and keep within their jurisdiction. And we'll get a super order, I'm quite sure, if they do that. And that will be a great credit to the, all these people who are asking for international judges to intervene in this matter of, uh, of our, relating to our war crimes. Mm. We have able people. Able people have not been given opportunity. When able people do get opportunity, they must take the opportunity and prove themselves. And that is a great credit to Sri Lanka. I love to watch the day that happens. I would uh, love to watch the day when the minister in charge of the subject of the central bank is brought before uh, the commission to explain his actions and this is why i say this section h of the uh, of the of the gazette notification says to to check whether any inquiry or probe into this matter had been obstructed or prevented in any manner resulting in damage or detriment to the government or any statutory body, including the CBSL, that's the central bank, and if so, the person or persons responsible for such obstruction. 
I put it to I want to ask you, Mr. Dietry, whether the actions of uh, the minister in charge of the subject of the central bank, when he issued instructions to the governor of the central bank that he wants the system of the way bonds were issued to be changed, whether that was detrimental to the republic and the central bank and of course to the people of the country. Well, for us, the minister has already given evidence on a matter that it pertains to him and I don't think he has no, come out. No, no, this is not, the, this minister hasn't given evidence because the minister in charge is the subject of the central bank and I'm glad this confusion has arisen between you and I here because this is precisely the point I'm trying to say. The minister in charge of the sub matter of the central bank is not the minister of finance as you, as you seem to think. It was and is none other than the minister of national policy planning, Mr. Rani Wickremesinghe, also the prime minister. I'm thankful for the correction because I, I don't watch these pr uh, pr pr the designations of ministers as closely as I should. Hmm. But I'm, I'm sorry I made an error. But the fact is that that minister it's has to... It's easily made. That it, mistake is that, easily that made. made. If I make it, I think many others also Absolutely. might follow. That's why I so say... So that's a very good point you get. He must be brought in. He should be the last witness, preferably so that they can look at the entire ambit of it and question him. So they must be bold and courageous. If they could bring the minister of finance on very personal dealings, yeah. they must bring the minister. And any other minister, remotely or directly, connected to this episode must also be called. I mean, I heard of another minister by name of Malik, uh, Malik, uh, Malik Samara Vikram, Samara Vikram. Vikram. Yes. If necessary, he should be brought and questioned. Yes, because particularly the Republic, the people would like to know uh, as to why a person who had no standing at that time, he had no position in, in the state, apart from the fact that he was the chairman of the United National Party. What on earth was he doing at a meeting discussing the requirement of state funding? Both he and Mr. Mahindran should be brought undoubtedly and I, I think it will give a lot of uh, courage to the judiciary yeah. that the judiciary which is an arm separate from the executive and legislature exercising their freedom properly and that will give a lot of credit internationally to Sri Lanka. Do you think Mr. Dasri that there are the judiciary in this country is mature enough and that the politicians on the other side of the fence are mature enough to understand that if the judiciary summons them to court to add clarity on certain matters that it is not a personal attack on that person or that person's office. Not at all because it is there very much in the mandate that has been presented. It is their obligation to call them and if they fail to call there may be questions as to why they were not called. Hmm. So I think they have no choice but to call them for their own respect, to gain respectability. It's, and, yeah. and also I feel that this is a wonderful opportunity for us to show the world how independent our judiciary is because Absolutely. here are two, three people who are endeavouring to do. One is not a judicial officer, mind you, he's a public servant. Yeah. That brings greater credit. It shows that the commission procedure should have been used against all politicians against whom allegations are made mm. today in before the FCID. But to, instead of that, they are going go into a court process which is absolutely a waste of time because you can't have day-to-day -day proceedings. Now mm. here, this is what I suggested Brown before this commission was there. Get into the commission process and thereafter. Let these commissioners make recommendations relating to the punishment. Mm. They can't enforce it, but the parliament can enforce it. And there's a precedent when J.R. Jawadhan did that to Mrs. Bandar Naik's case. Overruling, mind you, here there's no question of overruling a decision of the Supreme Court. They overrule a decision made by three eminent judges, Justice Vaitalingam, Justice Kosi Kolintomi and Justice uh, uh, Vimala Ratna, mm. overruled them in the Supreme Court, then known as the Appeal Court, which was the apex court of the country, and then through a parliamentary legislation by a motion in parliament, got Mrs. Bandar Naika's civic rights removed, and they made it what is worth retrospective. They said any matters here and after cannot be conducted, cannot be questioned in a court of law. 
So, I mean, with so many undemocratic acts committed by Jawadana, I think we are very fortunate now to be in a regime. And I think there's something more I see. Mm. I think this is one of the things that might make the SLFP once again mm. a combine of Rajapaksas and the Sirisenas. It has its pluses, it has its minuses. But this, together with the statements made by General Fonseca in recent times, might bind the two parties together. Thank you. Now then, before I go on to the next question, one of our viewers, and thank you for being such a regular viewer. Um, I, I don't know the name of this viewer, but I do know the number because I've stored the number as a viewer. Mr. Gomin is an eminent personality, a lawyer who has performed a yeoman service to the public. Going back, he was instrumental in winning back all the benefits withdrawn and sacked by the government in 1971. Will the PM ever come before the Bond Commission, Mr. Gomin? If he's summoned, he has to come, and if he doesn't come, it'll look very, very poor for him if he refuses to come. He has no judicial right to refuse a summons because he is, he must, the rule of equality extends to him. And no more is, even the president, if summoned, has to come because he can't take up. Thanks to the 19th Amendment, one of the few amendments that give, doesn't give him the right to be above the law. So everybody, including the Chief Justice, is below the law. No one is above the law. And remember, this Chief Justice, I must say openly, did not have the guts to comment when Parliament was extended for four and a half years. And now the Prime Minister is saying he's going to bring legislation that elections can be held at any time. So this is where I think when we have a weak man at the top, a lot of wrongdoings can take place but I cannot blame him totally because he's one of the three judges including the then Chief Justice who refused to make comments when sub all counsel including myself because that was a case I filed and it's known as Dias Rivers State didn't make any pronouncements on this most vital subject. I'm prepared to face this in any case of any, any court of contempt I'm prepared to take this issue up. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, now then so that was the question about whether the Prime Minister as a minister in charge of the subject will, will be uh, called before. Shall we make the point that we are not interfering with anything but we are having a discussion as to, to see whether or not on the balance of probabilities whether uh, the Prime Minister is likely to be called in his capacity as minister in charge of the subject of the Central Bank. You are certainly in, in that area, but I am making pronouncements and I hold myself responsible for any pronouncement I make. Hmm. But I am doing it in the interest of justice, I am doing it in the interest of public. Many lawyers are scared to speak their mouth out. I am not. I probably it's my age. And uh, well, the idea is. But on a personal forget everything else do you would you want your prime minister to be summoned before court of law i would want to i would very much want to if any matter has to be queried but remember he is not summoned as an accused he is summoned to give evidence yes, under oath yeah, and for him to ascertain the truth hmm. so he has every right to be represented by counsel if he wants he has the right to take up all necessary defenses but he need all he's got to do is to speak the truth of known given facts where he is the prime dealer that's all. I mean, I would be ashamed if he doesn't come. And I'm sure Ranil Vikramasinghe is a sufficient Democrat to be, to be not fear to come before court. Is it the sort of thing that he can do? Can he write to the Commission and say, uh, listen, uh, Commissioners, I would like to come and help with your inquiries? Is it the kind of thing you are expected or not? Well, it, I think it's the duty. Let, let's treat him like any other individual citizen. Yeah. He need do that. If he's summoned, he should come, and the commissioners, if they think he's necessary, would summon him. And if he's summoned, he should appear, present himself, and give evidence without any fear. Because if he has done, you see, in this country, a lot of people, including some of the main opposition folk, don't serve us because they got skeletons to hide. If you have a clean conscience, what is there to be afraid of? Go and expose yourself totally and be cross-examined, because you know in your heart of hearts, you know in your mind that you have done no wrong. 
that is something our politicians fear. Some are in hiding, some don't come out into the open. Mrs. Darcy, as far as I'm concerned, as being somebody being here and w looking at what's happening around me, I can barely endure the fraud, the absolute f premeditated fraud that went on in in February 2015, not long after this government came in. Basically, they had it all planned. It, uh, they, they had this young fellow resign from his position uh, as a director of this company before his father-in-law was um, appointed as the governor. And it suggests to me that this is all premeditated. They have robbed this country the, the people's monies, they have manipulated this system and they have made whirlwind profits. And where on earth are these so-called public interest litigants? And where, where are all these NGOs and INGOs and all these business? All these people who shouted their heads off at the slightest deviation from a previous government. Where are all these people? Why have they been silent? This is the people's monies, Mr. Gorman. Do you not feel, as I do, about this, the monies of the people's? I, I do, for us, but I also have a certain degree of pride. It is Financial Times and you and Sirasa and MTV who exposed it. If not for you, this would have been another story that would have been swept under the carpet. So today we have the media, we have people in paper like Financial Times. I think that's a Sunday that Times that's right. newspaper. Give them credit. Give yourself credit. You are the two, I, I would say, you see, the pioneers who pulled they, it out. You, you know, you, sorry, uh, you, you said uh, earlier, you said, uh, you know, do they have the guts? Some of these people had the guts, and I think you wrote about it. Um, they had the guts, uh, the, the gall, to actually send a letter of demand. And they were so, I don't know, the word must be cocky. No, you know, f f uh, what happens for us is very often, I'm talking of lawyers. They are, they are independent, they can take up issues, but they don't because they are benefactors. The people who sp sponsor them, who feed, feed them, especially the government, they, but my view is that if you work for the government, as I have done several times, never charge a fee, right. never ask for any benefit. Take them one to one, to one. speak to them on the same terms. Now, the other day I was invited by Gotabe Rajapaksa to come and address his seminar. I said, no, I can't because I don't like some of the names that appear on, the, on his list because they have not been consistently with with national causes. So when I go there, I would be uh, purely participating to prop him up. I asked him, how many minutes do I get? I, said, he, I was told five to six minutes, my, my dear friend. To get him five to six minutes, I might be able to just say good morning and good evening. Mm. So I just refused it. But you've got to stand up to it. You've got to stand up to politicians, whether they're coming do in or think, defeated men. Do you think the, the, the Supreme Court... Uh, uh, from time and time again has uh, used these wonderful words that the conscience of the court had been shocked and uh, they said the la they said that the last as far as i know uh, when they were looking at the uh, the matter of the coal importation yes that is a very one re another case that our present ch yes. chief uh, chief justice sat on they said the the conscience were affected then they said that jurisdiction uh, they went into question yes. and finally said they can't make proper orders i mean i have never seen such a contradictory judgment of good and bad yes, why they did started, that happen why did that happen i think people want to show that they are very courageous and at the same time they want, they want to take all the safeguards. You've got to take, uh, you, if you're a judge, like the present commissioners, you've got to do what? Your job, not, not, to, uh, not to please to all these, the people these, all the time. Yes. These, and such judges are, um, in my view, not great judges. They, 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 once they, you know, really a judge, you must, they must realize one thing if anyone is listening, hmm. your greatness is measured after you retire. You, you, you will have all the good graces while in office. After office, you will be treated like dirt. It's about this, this story about the Defence Secretary 
uh, not not our defense secretary, but the uh, the defense secretary in the United States, who who went to this function as defense secretary. He he flew uh, business class. He was met by a limousine, and uh, he was taken in through a special back door. And when he asked for a coffee, um, it was delivered to him in uh, in the finest porcelain going. Uh, the following year, he was invited to this same seminar. This time round, he flew economy. Um, he got a taxi to the convention center. He was taken in through the front. He, he walked in through the front door. And when he asked somebody for a coffee, they pointed at a machine down there and said, it's over there. So he got himself a coffee. He was in a polystyrene cup. Yes, and that, then that, that, happens, that happens to our judges also. You know, they yeah. are warmly greeted when they are in office. When they are out of office, they have to search people to talk to. So that defense secretary says that this was this was the, the porcelain cup was not for him but for the position of the defense secretary uh, I, I wonder I, I, I'd, I'd love to ask uh, Mr. Gotabi Rajapaksa uh, whether he misses the trappings of that all-powerful position that he had uh, during the war uh, but this is nothing this is, this is nothing other than my curiosity as to how he feels if, out you, of power. if, if you ask for my curiosity I believe if he's deemed to be a coming man, he'll get once again a golden. He get a porcelain cup, porcelain, porcelain or something even better, a golden cup to drink with. Now then, do you then, think? The, the, could I speak on another topic that interests me? Indeed, the, the, please the, do. The, the outburst of Sarah Fonseca. Oh yes, but what what was all that about? Then? Now that is a very interesting situation yeah. because Sarah Fonseca, I think is a great general. I mean, we bought an over terrorism because of him, yes. because of his contribution very much, along with the contribution of the president and the defense secretary, whom all have to be held in high esteem. Yes. Sadly, they devalued Fonseca. And naturally, he has a man, he's a man with many grievances. But of course. I think he shoots his mouth too fast. I mean, here is a situation where the president very correctly says that he knows of our, none of our great soldiers are going to be harmed internationally. Yeah. Mahindra Rajapaksa says the same. Yeah. The UNP rank and file say this is a personal opinion of Fonseca. Now remember, General Fonseca is a cabinet minister. He has to observe collective responsibility. Now why is Ranil Vikramasinghe silent on this issue when when both these uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa and uh, Sirisena make statements that are very consistent with each other? Why is the UNP members who got rid of, uh, according to Talata, uh, to Korali, got rid of uh, Rajapaksa for, for some uh, event where he has harmed collective responsibility. Mm. Is this not collective responsibility harmed to the extent that it will, it will it leads to a situation that UNP is brought into ridicule where their members have to say that this is private reference. But why are the members not then for, 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 um, taking steps to collect, uh, to enforce collective responsibility as they did in the case of uh, Rajapaksa? Mm. Because I'm not holding any brief but for Rajapaksa who was removed. Mr. Dasi, isn't it better for uh, all concerned, uh, including Field Marshal Fonseca, uh, the general of all generals, really, um, and the uh, present army commander, and the previous one, whom Jaisuri, whom Fonseca is talking about, isn't it better that they all kept silent or they toned it all down. It would be very much better if Fonseca made no such foolish utterance that has got into him serious trouble. Mm. I think Mahesh Senak is very responsible. He's yeah. acting perfectly. Yeah. And even the, the former com uh, g g g g uh, commander, Jagat Jai Surya, has not said anything. I mean, they are not openly commenting on anything except when he was asked, did you leave? Well, we'll have, shall we just put it down to that, as you uh, quite uh, correctly said, um, Sir Fonseca, Field Marshal Fonseca, has, uh, is a man with a lot of grievances because he was so uh, shamefully treated. 
grievances are one thing, but you can't act against your own forces who led you to victory. There's another thing I would like to say finally. Yes. I think people in res with, uh, holding high responsive but must act in a responsible way if they are considered to be leaders. Now in this particular case, I think it would have been better for every military officer to keep to himself and let the officials both in the uh, foreign ministry and in the justice ministry do the needful. Well, there you go. That is the end of Newsline today. It's gone ever so quickly. Uh, but Gomindasi, uh, thank you very much. And I want to leave you with this th with the story uh, from the island newspaper about the bond, bond gate, bond scams probe. The lawyer says he can't represent Perpetual Treasuries Limited anymore. And it transpired yesterday that the CEO of Perpetual Treasuries ordered the deletion of call data and that the computer hard disk was destroyed. Amazing bits of information coming out of a amazing commission who are bringing much uh, hope and joy to the public because finally we are getting somewhere towards accountability. Can I say one last word? You bizarre. Bizarre is the bizarre. of all three events. All three are bizarre. Gobind Dasri, thank you very much. That's all it is and that's the way it is from Newsline. Tuesday, the 5th of September, 2017. Take care. God bless.